Now for this class, we're going to take another light year jump, gigantic jump in Illustrator, uh, as I show you two very, very important panels, okay? Um, the appearance panel and the effects panel. Now the effects panel, I really don't use that much, but the appearance panel is absolutely key, okay? And I want to introduce them together because I use them together all the time. Um, uh, when you use, when I use the effects panel, I use it as part of the appearance panel. Here's the appearance panel right here, okay? All you do is go up to window and get um, appearance, or you can do shift F6, and it'll appear, okay? And what I'm going to do is just draw a simple shape, a circle, okay? Here we go, circle. And if you'll notice over here on the appearance panel, you'll see that it says path, um, stroke, fill, opacity. Whatever is selected is showing up here on the appearance panel. It's telling you about the appearance of this object. So if I change this to a pinkish color, it's going to change over here, okay, as long as that's selected. If I alt-click and bring this over here and let's say make this a blue, and now I click on this, now we're looking at all the different parts of this object, okay? So this object's uh, selected and you see it here. Okay, let's get rid of that. Now, one of the really, really cool things about the appearance panel is you can create all sorts of um, effects to this object that are editable and you can um, go back and change them whenever you want. And that includes effects. So let me give you an example, okay? We have fills. Um, I'm going to change the color of the fill. I'm going to put a stroke here. I'm going to just put a, actually, I'm going to do that over here. I'm going to make a green stroke. Oops, that didn't work. Here we go. I've got a stroke, green stroke. I'm going to make that big. Let's do 10. All right, so now we have a green stroke that's at 10 and a fill that's this red color. Now we can go into the stroke. I'm gonna click on the stroke and we can start changing the properties. For example, you can see that it's right on the line here. Now we can change that so again, it's inside, it's outside. Um, you can change it to dashed lines. You can change how the dashed lines are. I'm not gonna go in depth on this, but you know, I just don't want you to be afraid when you see that. You can change how the dashes are. They're not uniform like that, okay? But um, I'm just gonna get rid of the dash lines for now. Oops. Remember, you always have to be on the object, selected on the object to have things happen to it. Okay, and now one of the really cool things about this is you can add more strokes to it or more fills to it. So I can add another stroke on top of the stroke and let's change the color of that one to, um, I'll just change it to orange. And you can add new stroke. And you can do that inside, outside, just sitting on top of the other one. Um, and that's a way to, you know, add a lot of functionality to a shape pretty quickly, okay? Or you could just make that white if you wanted to. And, you know, it's all just a way to combine things together and create new things. Um, Another, now the, the leap and bound we're going to take with this is adding effects to the appearance panel, okay? So let's go up. I really don't use effects that much. Um, and when I do, I typically, the warp is the one that I use a lot. And the warp basically just takes a shape and warps it in a, a variety of different ways, okay? So let's select on this guy and let's do effect warp arc. Okay, now when this panel comes up, you're going to have a little preview button. If you have a slow computer, the, um, the computer, it won't render the, the effect until you hit preview. But let's go ahead and hit preview. And, okay, what is going on here? That is a total mistake. Now what is happening is we've applied the effect to the stroke. Okay, now let's go back, hit cancel. Let me see here. Now 
Now, I need to make sure that I'm applying the effect to the entire path, okay? So let's go to Effect, Warp, Arc, Preview. And now you can see that all of the, the entire object is being affected by this warp path, okay? And you can change it over here. You can move this around to, you know, horizontally where it's being affected and vertically where it's being affected. And this also gives you a bunch of different options as to um, how you're going to um, warp it, warp your object. Okay, so you can do it in an arc, a bulge in the middle. Uh, let me put this here so you can kind of see bulge or a bulge inward. You can always do the positive and the negative of the effect. Um, flag, flag is always good. That gives you this little effect. But one thing I want you to realize is these are not uh, permanent effects, okay? So let's go to OK. And you'll see right here the effect. Once you click OK, the effect is right here. But it's not permanent. If you go, if you figure out later something happens and you say, oh, well, I don't like how this was um, done, I can go back and I can change it again. Or I can even change the effect. Okay. Now, I'm never going to use, you know, a circle like this. So let's use something that we would do in the real world. Let's look at, uh, I'm, I'm going to do a quick example of this guy right here, okay? Now, if you look at the Netflix, you might say, um, okay, how do they do this effect where they have the top is flat and the bottom is curved? Well, I'm pretty sure that they did this by using a similar effect to this. So um, I'm just going to uh, create a new text object. I'm going to click on, just click here, and I'm going to hit Netflix. This is, again, we're just using the Miriam Pro. Um, there's a ton of different fonts that will kind of be similar to this. Um, and it's more or less. I mean, it's not perfect, but it works. So I'm just going to, I, I usually don't like to just drag and transform my text. What I like to do is use the, um, the text tool. So I'll just go up to Window, Type character and I'll change the size of everything down here um, so we'll make that larger we'll space out the letters a little better and this just keeps you from getting into um, it keeps you in whole numbers okay so let's just there we go we'll do it like that now how do we get this little curve on the bottom well if you will look over here you'll see that we have the uh, this is now saying type and we have opacity we can change the opacity see we can change a lot of different things we can go into this stuff later this is where you going you can deal with clipping masks um, and opacity masks and things like that we're not going to deal with that right now um, but what I want to do is see what happens if we've got we're selected on type and we want to go up to effect warp and we need to, we can just click arc for now, but what's the effect that we need to use if we only want to affect the bottom arc of this? It appears like it would be this guy because the top is flat and the bottom is curved. So let's click on that. Okay, that looks a little bit off, but that's because we're going positive with the blend, okay? Uh, for, with the bend, sorry. So let's do that backwards in this guy. Let's see how that looks. Okay, let's put these at zero. Put everything at just if you need to make it zero you can just select this and do zero okay that's starting to look a little bit more like the logo it's not perfect you know I don't think we even have the right font here but it gives you an idea of how you can do that okay now let's go to the type tool up here you can see that on the type tool we now have this war this warp arc okay and I'm going to go ahead and just add a red background. Let's try to make it as close as possible. So we're right here on the, um, I'm just going to lock that guy. Underneath the Netflix, I'm going to um, create a red square. So there we go. 
going to do the eyedropper and click on that red. And I'm going to take this red and drag it under the Netflix. There we go. Now I'm going to select both of these guys and hit the um, align tool so they're both you know, in the middle. And you can actually align everything to the artboard that you're working on. So let's do align, align to artboard. Okay, and then we're going to center that again. There we go. Okay. Now, of course, Netflix needs to be white. There we go. And you're going to notice something. When I select Netflix here, you're going to see the old Netflix text here. You're not going to see the Netflix with the effect on it. Now, once I have this pretty well done, what I will do is, okay, I want to make, the first thing that I need to do is turn Netflix into a shape. Once you are totally ready and you know that you're done, I'm going to take, I'm going to select on this. And like we did before, I'm going to go up to type and do create outlines. So now, as you can see, the Netflix, let's turn off the, um, the effect for a second. Now this is just shapes, okay? It's a bunch of shapes together. You can see all the individual letters here and they're grouped together. And then we have, if you turn on the effect, now you can see the effect, okay? And if you, if you want to um, make the effect permanent, like let's say you want to send this off to a client as a finished logo, you don't want to have that effect on it anymore. Okay, you can say, okay, well, I'm going to tweak it a little bit more. Let's tweak it a little more. Let's play with it. Okay, and that's it. That's going to be our logo. Okay, you don't want to send them a logo that's got the effect, the warp effect. You want to make this actually, um, you know, the shape look like this guy. Okay, so we're going to go up again, go to object and expand appearance. And now the shape is the shape that we have. That's the, the um, you know, the final shape. We don't have any effect on that anymore. Okay, if we click on that, you just see the group of letters that are there. Okay, so hopefully that, I mean, I know it's kind of complicated, but I think it's important to learn um, the effects panel as part of the appearance panel. Okay, and you know, once you have this, you can, um, do other effects. To, I don't really use a lot of these effects, but just to, to look through them, you can see, um, let's see, distort transform. I don't use that. You can twist and tweak and transform. You can, you can, you know, do all kinds of things to shapes. Um, I don't ever use these. You can do like a, um, a drop shadow. Here's some Photoshop effects that I almost never use. Uh, you know, for example, drop shadow, here you go, preview, and there's a little drop shadow. You can, um, I don't like to have raster kind of effects like that, this in Illustrator. So I would do zero blur on this guy. And let's see, opacity 100. And let's see how that looks. And that looks a little bit more like this. This is actually a little more complicated. It's it's a uh, stroke with a 3D effect. Um, and we can do that. I, it's pretty easy to, to redo that. So, okay. And now we have that drop shadow. If you want to, we can do the same thing that we did before and make that part of the logo too and make this a vector cutout. So let's go up to object, expand appearance. And now we've got this as our logo. We've got this shadow is actually if we double click on that, we'll go inside of that and you can see that we have this black logo now behind it. And you know, you can double click on the Netflix group that's together now and you can also inside of that embedded object, you can see that we're now inside of that group. You can add a stroke, a black stroke to that, make it bigger. And I just want you to realize how deep this goes. It's really, you know, amazing how many levels there are. Now, this obviously doesn't look like the logo, but um, it just 
you know, the idea is to give you a feel for how it all works.